Dawn, and welcome back to DxO, my channel where I share with you some of how I'm processing my images using DxO Photo Lab 5. Um, just want to take a moment to thank everybody that might be watching now that's that's been um, coming along previously. Um, and what I mean is I just kind of passed a, a milestone that uh, I found, I don't know, rewarding in some way, um, is that uh, I've had over a thousand views now on my various videos um, and up to 40 subscribers. So although that wasn't my goal when I started out doing this, I was just doing it for interest. Um, it, it, it does feel nice. It's very satisfying to have some people actually watching. So thanks for coming along. Um, and uh, yeah, hope you enjoy today's video. And today's video is um, about skin tone. Uh, ultimately in DxO. So let me just make this bigger. There we go. Um, and I thought just to start off, I would also showcase something that I, I use occasionally. I don't use it heaps, but it's actually perfect for this scenario um, because I had a couple of skin tone photos that I wanted to use um, from different folders. Um, so that's using the project functionality. So I've actually already created a project. Um, and it shows down at the bottom of this list, Project Skin Tone. Um, and, and I did that um, just by right-clicking on another image. And uh, uh, I, in that instance, I chose Create a Project from the current selection. Um, but this time, of course, since it already exists, then I can, I can come down here and actually choose to add it to that. Um, so let me just click out of here because I grabbed the wrong one. Um, so yeah, again, just simply to add it to a project. So this is the one that I'm going to, this has already been processed. This was my photo of the day a while back. Um, and I'm just going to also, um, for good measure, um, command click on the um, color picker just so that I can get good, um, good color balance. So and I'll just right click those and do add current selection to project skin tone. And there they will show up in that folder now. Um, and then I will just pop back to the, the other image came from the day 56 folder. So I'll pop back here and I only added the one image. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the color picker uh, in there as well. Skin tone. Awesome. So once I've done that, I can just come down and click on the project folder and I just am seeing the four um, and it doesn't really matter where they live. Um, for my purposes now, they just live right here. So it's a cool little feature. Um, yeah, so doing skin tones, uh, let, let me think. I'll start out with um, with this one, perhaps. I'll just create a virtual copy. And um, I will reset that. Let's come up here to the reset space. Awesome. Um, so some things that I have noticed about um, DxO Photo Lab and skin tones is uh, well one one of the things is that especially for something this this was this was actually flashed so I had a flash in a umbrella um, and uh, and you know in my background I've done a bit of sort of studio work so you know lit with studio strobe so to speak and I've always noticed that straight off um, Shots are a little overly contrasted um, and overly saturated uh, for for that sort of environment. Um, so and and obviously this one is also um, a, a bit underexposed, and you'll you'll see that I'll be raising things up a little bit as I go there. But one of the things I've noticed along the way, um, and it's really interesting to me, is that if I choose, uh, so I've got this image selected, and if I go up to presets up here. Um, and just come up and I come to neutral colors. Um, it's it's going to do a few things to that image and, and just to see see what the difference is just from choosing neutral colors. Um, so if I come over here to customize and just starting here have a look. So one thing that when I do that, the neutral colors, is that I notice that it is giving itself a minus 20 um, on contrast. So obviously to get neutral, you need to remove some of that contrast because they're they're kind of bumping a little bit extra in. 
Um, and another thing that I've noticed when I do that is that um, the color rendering goes to generic renderings, neutral color, neutral tonality um, version two, rather than camera default. Um, so that is a difference. And another the difference this is they're doing a minus 10 on saturation and a, a plus 10 on vibrancy. So I think all of these things are sort of speaking to the 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 standard set of stuff that that goes into making a good looking image most of the time. Um, but if you want to make it a bit more neutral, you need to pull a lot of that out. So I often just as a starting place, we'll just grab that um, grab that preset and it will kind of take care of it'll bring me into a slightly less um, contrasty sort of starting point. Um, so uh, I've got the image there. I'm just going to pop over here um, and a lot of times I would um, copy corrections from here, but since since I've just done that, it's going to mess with that. So what I'm going to do is is just going to come up here to my white balance color picker, grab that. I, I usually just use this first one in the skin space. So all, all of these are different um, amounts of warmth on the skin space. And, and I tend to, I, I could use a neutral gray as well, but I tend to, I, I like the, um, like what it does there. So I'll click that and I'm just going to look and it says 5371 and minus four. So I'm just going to manually go back and see where I'm at 5360. That's close enough. Um, but I might just shift this from five to minus four, pull a bit of that magenta out. Um, and there we go. Nice. So thinking about um, thinking about skin tones. So one of the things that that you know I notice here is that right now I've got DXL smart lighting on, but I think that's not ideal. I'll use smart lighting in the next one, um, but I think it's not ideal for this because if I put it on spot weighted, it's not going to find my face. And and I could click this little tool here and I could tell it to do something there and and actually that's not too bad let's see yeah that's quite reasonable um, so not too bad so you could get away with that with spot weighted and then just identifying a place um, the other thing that I might just try and I'll see which one I prefer is to just put on straight up uh, exposure compensation Wow, center weighted wants to take that quite high. I don't want it that high at all. Probably want it around 80-ish. So just out of curiosity, and I've not done this side by side previously, it's just something that occurred to me as I was going. Um, so we've got that and versus the smart lighting version. awfully darn similar. I'm going to just see if there's any difference to how the highlights are impacted. So that's um, with just exposure compensation. Turn that off. And there. Yeah, actually, I think. And I actually, the, the example photo there is done the other way. But I'm going to go ahead with um, smart lighting on this one. I think it's it has actually done a nice job. Um, nice. Now, I'm also going to just pull the, um, I'm going to just do like a little bit of a tweak here. I'm going to pull these down 10 highlights. I'm probably going to pull my midtones um, and my shadows up about 10. Just ballpark. Basically, I'm just, I'm just trying to keep it for the tone of the image. I don't want it too bright because it's not a, not a super bright image, but also I don't want to completely um, blow out the highlights on the forehead and I'm just looking at you know how are the how are the eyes going and they actually seem reasonably well um, exposed for what that is nice so I think yeah, I mean, obviously there's a bit of a crop on there um, if I come over here go unconstrained um, the other one Want it to be slightly more to that side, slightly less to that side, slightly less behind my head, slightly more ahead of my head, something like that. Ballpark. Um, I know in the um, original too, and it looks like it's getting actually pretty close there. Um, 
I also had uh, some grain. And I'm just going to pop some, just because it's, it kind of seems like that kind of a photo to me. Um, pop some Riala green on there, which would be pretty fine anyway. It's going to be awfully, awfully fine. And a little bit of creative vignette, perhaps. Something to that effect. Just bring that down a touch. Um, the other thing that it occurs to me while I'm talking about skin tone is there's a, an interesting tool in here um, in the color space. I've just popped back to the color space. Um, the style toning area and if I turn that on it's it's in black and white but um, third one down is portrait and uh, sometimes I like this sometimes I don't it, it adds uh, you what you watch it adds a little something to the skin it also saturates the skin which is most often when I don't use it it's for that reason this is because I find it's saturating it you know, so if it's essentially if it's skin that's looking a little bit washed out or a little bit dead, then it's it's gorgeous, it's lovely. Um, but if it's skin that's already quite um, saturated and vibrant, then um, it's often too much. So that is a neat little tool there. So that's that image. Um, see how close I came pretty quickly. Yeah, not too far off. I think that this one. Might be a touch, the, the one that I just did might be a touch brighter, but um, but yeah, that, that's all right. So I interrupt myself um, just to do a quick update because I realized after I filmed the last piece that I actually left out a tool that is really quite handy when it comes to skin tones. Um, and that is the HSL tool. Uh, so if we look at, so wait, move this little recording Jubert. Um, if we look at this, you know, you can see that I've got quite a bit more red in the cheeks there. Um, and so we can use this tool to kind of even things out a little bit. So <clears throat> if I come in here um, and look, you know, this is sort of uh, qu quite a difference there. If I turn on HSL and, and start out with the red channel, just as a starting place, grab my picker um, and grab a, grab a piece of skin tone that I'm quite happy with. Um, and then what I'm going to do is check how my selection of that is and to see that that the skin tones are all included in that selection. And I'll just do that by dropping the saturation. And when I do that, I can see that there is some um, some red that's not been really selected. So I'm just going to, knowing I, I need to expand this, this is the main selection, this is the feather. Um, so I'm going to just expand the main selection down a little bit until I see all of those um, little bits get incorporated into that selection, which I think is about there. I'm not seeing um, any more little fragments um, coming there. So I think that will do. So now if I just zoom back out a little bit, and this isn't a massive difference, so I'm not sure how much this will show up, um, but essentially what we can do is even that out using the uniformity slider. Um, so, you know, if I, if I, uh, for video's sake, because it might not show up much, I'll take it all the way. Um, normally I would not tend to take it all the way. You know, I might, might try to even things out, but not go too far. Um, but if I go all the way and now just turn that off and turn that on, let me just zoom in a little bit. turn that off and turn that on it's just just turning the turning the colors here and shifting them um, a little bit more towards uh, these ones so like I said we'll, we'll, we'll tone that back down but that's that's a great little tool the one caveat with this tool is that unlike <clears throat> unlike their competitor um, capture one this isn't you, you can't plunk this on a separate layer. So one of the things that you can do in that software is, is put this type of adjustment on a separate layer. Um, and then you can remove the lips um, and remove the eyes if you need to, so that you're just impacting the skin. So that is a little bit of a limitation here. Um, so I'll close this so I don't have to picker anymore. I'm not sure if we look at the lips here, if they've been impacted much, but maybe. No, not too much in this case. Maybe just a little. Well, just a little bit. Um, and the, the truth is, if, if you did find them to be quite impacted, 
Um, again, this isn't a massive difference, but if you did find them to be quite impacted, you could probably come to a local adjustment, grab a, a control point, plunk it on the lips, um, come here, and then and then have a have a go with with a hue shift, um, one way or another. So not to the green side. Maybe put put a little. You know, something, something I, I don't know exactly. You need to play with it and try it out. But that would be one way around it, but uh, a little bit of a limitation. But hopefully that you found that interesting, a little bit of a, a, an extra tool that you can use sometimes to help even out those skin tones. So back to your regularly scheduled programming. Um, now this image, if I pop over to here, I just did this maybe a night or two ago. Uh, let me do a create virtual copy um, and let me reset this. Boom, it's quite dark and, and it's dark largely because I was just trying to keep, I was, so this is flashed, it's got a flash off to the um, left. And, um, I, but I was trying to keep some detail in this and some like some of the glow and sort of ambience of that and not, not totally roast that out. Um, so knowing that I'd be able to mess with it in, in post, so to speak. Um, so, with this, uh, you know, having just completely reset it, I just pop over here, um, come in here, and actually I should reset this one too because I've obviously applied something to that. Um, and I'm just, we'll imagine this is from starting place, and um, let me see, actually I'll do this, and exposure compensation center weighted just to start, just to bring it up a little. Um, and then I'll pop back here, grab the white balance tool, and again, just picking on that one right there, and it um, it grabbed that. So that's awesome. So now I right click on that, try one more time, <laughs> copy correction settings, <laughs> click on this one, right click, paste correction settings. Again, there are various things you can do in terms of all the selective pasting. You can you know just apply certain ones. Um, but I've only done a couple of things here, so that's all good. Um, so that's that's done. So what do we get there? Lightened up and shifted the color balance a bit. So that's all good. Um, so I, I think that this photo actually works great. And you know, I take varying levels of, of how I feel about smart lighting. Um, it's already got a bit of a center weighted thing going on, but I'm gonna tick on smart lighting as well. Um, and it, it brings the whole photo up, but now I'm gonna do spot weighted and it's just gonna reassess. See, it's got one face detected um, and it did a slightly different job than it did on you. It's not huge, but you can see a little bit of a shift. It's made some other um, some other decisions based on the fact that it's, it's found the face there. So that is all good. Um, this one, because it's more of an environmental and it's a little bit more pulled back and it, it whatnot, I, I don't feel like I, you know, with the other one, I went straight to the, to neutralizing it a bit, to pulling some of the saturation out, to, um, to lessening the contrast and, and all of that kind of thing. Um, but I'm, I'm not gonna do that as much here. Um, I'm actually quite, quite happy to let that ride. So I'm gonna just maybe pop those up a touch, midtones. Shadows like a hint, but not too much. I need to back out so that I can get a better sense for the whole thing. Awesome. Obviously there's a crop on there, so I'll do that real quick. And I have not done my unconstrained. So I'll just pull that in that way. Just get past that light switch. Um, and get past the awkward cord on the side <laughs> over here. Uh, nice. Okay, so that's good for the crop. Lovely. Um, so I don't, I'm just trying to think what else I might do to this. Might give this one a touch of fine contrast. And you know, in an earlier video, um, I was uh, talking about how I wasn't a hundred percent sure of the exact difference between micro contrast and fine contrast. And then a couple of days later. Um, I stumbled across a feature that I had completely forgotten about, but it's super handy. Um, and it's this little question mark at the side. Um, and if you open it up, you get a great little description there. Um, so they're saying 
that fine contrast enhances or softens medium-sized details. So it gives a softer effect than microcontrast when pushed to the right and more uh, is more suited for portraits. Again, fine contrast is one that will only show up to my memory uh, if you've got film pack installed. I could be wrong. Oh yeah, look at that extra settings for film pack five. Yeah, so that is that is what's up with that if you're not seeing it. So great little feature, this little question mark here. I had completely forgotten it was even there. Um, so I'm gonna just try maybe a little bit of a little bit of fine contrast, give it a little bit more of a, a something something. Nice. Okay. Um, now I, I know that that going from here to here, you can probably tell looking at the thumbnails that there's a, a little bit of a color shift there, um, and that's because I was playing about. I think I threw a uh, color rendering of color negative film of Fuji Riella on that. Yep, that looks about right. Fuji Riella. Um, Awesome. Just having a, I don't think I'll pop this on, but I don't think I'll probably leave it on. Boom. What do we get? Yeah, not bad, but I, I think I'll just leave it be. Excellent. So that's a couple of examples of working with um, skin tones, some of the tools available. Um, oh, one thing I didn't mention. Uh, I've also, if, if you do have film pack and you can play around with such things, um, I have also found sometimes that, um, so if I just come back to this one, it might be a better example. Um, so if I go to generic renderings, no, actually I take it back. If I go to camera body renderings, um, you can get quite a few different looks in here and even so if I take, so I've got a D750, so if I take the Nikon D750, that's its natural one. Um, but it's it's worth like the D610, um, D800, etc. right above it has quite a different look. And, and, and I use this one sometimes for portraits too, um, because it has sort of a, I find it eases into the highlights a little bit more gently, um, whereas I find the highlights on the profile for D750 can, can be a little bit harsh on skin. So just another little another little trick. So hopefully you've got something new, some new little tidbit that you can take away for working with skin tones. Um, again, thanks so much for tuning in, and I hope to see you again. Cheers.